vlogging for the Press Democrat here at Pe uh, Taps in Petaluma with the owner, Eric LaFranchi. Yes, thank you. Me, yeah. <laughs> thank you for having us here today, Eric. Thanks for coming down. Um, so Taps has been in business now for about six years. Um, when Taps opened for business, uh, you guys were a little ahead of the curve. Um, most of the tap rooms were uh, carrying, you know, uh, we don't want to name the names, but the big uh, corporate brews. Uh, Blue Moon. Budweiser, Coors Light, okay. Yeah, yeah I just, I, I, you know, I don't know if, they, if I'm going to get the check for advertising them or not, but... Okay, so no, for the most part, you know, most most tap rooms are carrying uh, some beers. Um, most of their beers actually from uh, big uh, corporate breweries. And um, six years ago, Eric made the decision when he opened the door to uh, we, work we, with not just me. They. So, so who's we? My wife and I. Okay, so they. And no, I appreciate that. I'm sure she does as well. Um, but so they made the decision to work with only craft breweries. Um, when you made the decision to do that, uh, what inspired you to do that? Wow, boy, that's really going back. So I went to college at uh, Chico State, and everybody's pretty familiar with what Chico is famous for besides the Playboy Party School of the Nation. Um, somebody might have heard of Sierra Nevada. Sierra Nevada, Company. yeah. I've heard, of, um, I've heard that name once or twice before, sure. So on a slim budget, we always were toting around uh, backpacks full of Keystone Light, Ice Dry, Old Milwaukee's Best, and when we could get any money together, it was always a Sierra Nevada, Pale Ale. Sure. And that's going back to 94 ish, so 1994. Yeah. Um, so I became very familiar with what craft beer was way back then. And then Lagunitas had launched IPA and everything was taken off from here. And when I moved back, that's when I saw this awesome explosion in the craft beer scene that really was so under the radar because Lagunitas was always coming out with seasonal beers and nobody was making a big deal about it. Sure. And you can never find those on draft. Mm -hmm. So, one thing led to another, blah, 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 here we are, 2000 and what year is it, Steve? <laughs> 2015. Yeah. So, here we are. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, there, you know, you were a little ahead of the curve because now there are a lot of tap rooms that are doing the um, craft beer exclusive pours, uh, but you were, you know, the first, that, as far as I know, in Sonoma County doing that. Am I, am I right? I mean, was it, was anybody doing it before you? I don't know if anybody was doing it exclusively, but when we opened or decided to open in 2009, so we started shopping around for spaces in 2008, um, took us about eight months to figure out where we wanted to land, and then it was the hard push to get 30 taps. Sure. All craft centric. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, um, when you start shopping around for craft beer, a lot of the distributors didn't even know what craft beer was. Yeah. Okay, so the one that stood out, Morris Distributing here in Petaluma, plug, plug. they were the ones that got behind us from day one. Um, had a lot of help uh, building our beer coolers, setting up our draft towers, and doing all this, this hardcore um, work to get everything set up. And then here comes the push from the distributors for the major corporate brands sure. that, that if you don't put them on, you're gonna fail. No, I remember when uh, when you guys uh, first opened, uh, I've been in, in, in the industry a long time and the distributor's gonna come with you like, there's no way you can't. Hey, no, hey, go for it, man. Uh, no, 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 I, I'm on break, so this is where we go to. Again? No. What, again? Wow. We're gonna roll with it. No, I haven't had one. So, no, no, no. I've been in the industry long enough to know that uh, these distributors, um, they have to meet their quotas. There's certain Why? numbers that they have to make on, you know, the big brands again, like the Budweiser and the Coors Lights of the world. So um, when you were opening, these guys were telling you, you're crazy. There's no way you're going to make it. Um, these are the biggest, most important brands in the country, the best selling beers. You have to carry these brands. Yeah. Otherwise, you're doomed to fail. Yeah. So then I figured if we're going to fail, might as well be on my terms and not everybody else's. I can appreciate that, and obviously things have worked out pretty well. Um, I, I do want to mention that uh, originally Taps uh, was on Kentucky Street uh, here in Petaluma. Right. And uh, after, it seemed like it was about a couple years, is that about right? We were there for four and a half years. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. So after about four and a half years, uh, you ended up making the move uh, over here, uh, right by the river. Um, and things seem to have worked out actually very well for you. Uh, he has a full house like he always does on a Friday. Um, but were you a little concerned uh, when you had to make that move? Of course. Did, okay. Yeah. You thought no, it's, maybe... It's, it's I... always like, 
the old taps had this vibe and, and the vibe was the the pedal and cheers vibe where you would walk in and kind of hunker down and mm -hmm. you'd see people that you know and you could go hang out and do what you needed to do and order a beer and go sit somewhere sure um so losing that vibe was detrimental to us but at that point when our kitchen's closed and we don't have any options mm -hmm. i got to play the hand that's dealt to me yeah. so Luckily, this spot was still available, and uh, we could rub some nickels together and uh, and get this build out done with the support of uh, my wife and and our family, which sure. they're hanging out over here. Um, so without any of that, this whole project doesn't exist. So you, I mean, you've created quite the following. Uh, I imagine most business owners would be nervous about moving a business that's you know not even five years open uh, from one location to the next, but it seemed like everybody that was going there is following you here. We have been very lucky with the support that we've gotten from Petaluma because I'm from here, so I think that a lot of, of our guests enjoy the fact that they can come to a place that is Petaluma owned, local owned. I sure. live here, my kids go to school here. Um, a lot of our, our VIP guests, they are Petalumans and they love the fact that we were able to make the move and the situation at the hotel didn't keep us down and here we are at a new spot with an awesome build out. We've got outdoor seating here which has been fantastic and we're able to build out a small little VIP room which mimics the basically the dining room of our old spot. Mm -hmm. So we brought a little piece of that sure. and planted it right down here. So it's been pretty awesome. Uh, so. I do want to talk a little bit about, um, you have, I believe it was what, like 30 some taps? How, how many, where are you at now? Here? Yeah. Uh, we've got 39, 39 craft taps, taps okay. plus one rotating draft root beer tap. So we'll call it 40. So 40. Um, what, what I've noticed is, I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you, carry, you carry great beer from all over the world, really, but the emphasis, the focus is on the local small production breweries. Right. Um, you work, uh, you know, you work with these guys, you support them. Like, uh, guys this, and girls. Guys and yeah, girls. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, he, he, he got me on that one. That's true. Um, these, these women are making better beer than most guys out there these right. days. Um, good call. <laughs> appreciate that <laughs> so uh, no no but uh, you, you have great beer from all over the world uh, you know obviously supporting the local community um, they appreciate it because you're consistently putting them back on tap and I, I noticed that I'm sure a lot of people do that from the taps um, in return these guys are supporting you you've been around doing this a little bit longer than some of these other startup tap rooms that are focusing on craft beer exclusively yeah but um, they tend to come to you and they, they offer you these limited release beers first before anybody else a uh, perfect example is uh, you had a uh, 101 North. It was a uh, it was their, uh, their I release, party, your right? release party, right? Yeah, night, yeah. It, but they could choose to work with anybody in the county. They choose you. Uh, what does that mean to you? Wow, I don't even know how to how to hang my hat on that. But everybody's realizing the fact that we make our living on craft beer. Mm -hmm. So that is the foremost, the most important thing that we can do is to invite everybody and see what we're all about create a demand and the, the breweries are seeing how their liquids being receptive here um, so as the volume increases I think we've been steadily moving up in everybody's allocation list because we are creating the atmosphere that craft beer fans are coming to sure so that I, little I hamlet that. in Petaluma yeah. is becoming somewhat significant in the craft beer world I'm gonna ask you uh, one question. Uh, I like to ask one non-beer related question just to kind of give the viewers, uh, hold on a second, <laughs> just to, get, <laughs> to get, come back here, just to give the viewers an opportunity to get to know you personally a little bit better. Um, are you a sports guy? You, you enjoy sports? I imagine you do. I like sports. Okay, so do you have a favorite athlete of all time? Favorite athlete of all time? I'm gonna go back to, uh, to the early days. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan die-hard Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I'm a child of the 70s and when I was on the playground and we played football, I always wanted to be Earl Campbell. All right. Earl Campbell was the man that would just mow down anybody that would get in his way. Yeah. So that's my guy. Yeah. He, he wasn't running around people, he was kind of running through people. Through them and, he's, <laughs> and he wasn't a Stealer. Yeah. So Houston Oiler back in the day. Eric, I appreciate your time. Um, I do want to give you an opportunity um, 
to you know is there a special event is there um, you know anything about taps that you want to share with the audience that we haven't already talked about sure yeah we do uh, we host brewery nights every Thursday from 6 to we close and our chef puts together a small plate uh, paired menu with with the brewery specific for that night um, we bring in at least four exclusive taps for um, each brewery that night and then we keep those on until we roll through and then generally we keep um, one or two on full time from there on out um, Memorial Day weekend we've got the home brewers competition coming up yeah, which we that. are being a small part in trying to get that thing off the ground um, that's May 23rd at the Petaluma Veterans Memorial Building from 11 to 4 um, tickets are on sale brown paper tickets right now um, other than that, Saturdays, Sundays, we've got music coming up. Um, Basically, he's got something going on every got, day. We've got Come music on coming right? up July, uh, June 7th. It's going to be our first Sunday from 3 to 6. Nice. And then every Sunday after that, we're going to do live music out on the deck. Thanks for having us. I'm getting a little thirsty. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a beer. Yeah. All right. Ed Hobbs, thanks for holding the camera. We're out.